So I expect that many of you showed up today to get some answers from us here, the speakers on the stage, from people like me. But let's face it, we're moving into a future where AI can give you these answers. And AI will probably provide a more comprehensive, more individualized, and likely also easier to understand answer than I can ever provide you with. So in that world, what is my role? What is our role as humans? I don't know about you, but when I start to ponder that question, I start to worry. I start to worry quite a bit. Let me explain why. As a psychologist, I know that we as humans are in need of a positive sense of self. Mind you, a positive sense of self, not an inflated sense of self. So it is this positive sense of self that is vital, not only for our well-being, but also for our continuous striving and exploration in life. Now, one of the ways how we come by this positive sense of self is by comparing ourselves to others. And naturally, we strive to win, as for instance shown in our striving for better grades, for the trophies and sports, um, for the likes on social media, for the promotion at work, uh, or winning over a client. And because we want to win, we show effort. So it is that idea, it is that logic, that our meritocratic system is built upon. You show effort, and you get better, and ultimately you're going to be rewarded for it. In that sense, life, or our striving in life, is fueled by hope and reinforced by success. But what happens when AI takes that exactly away from us? Let me explain by way of a metaphor. Let's assume that our little comparisons, our little competitions, and we do arm wrestling matches with each other. So we seek each other out, and we arm wrestle each other in math, we arm wrestle each other in social media, and so on. And we, you know, we train a little bit, we try to get better so that we win these arm wrestling matches. And we do a gazillion of them throughout our lifetime. And as we do, we also sometimes seek out or challenge the masters, you know, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger. We see him, we say, one day, one day I'm going to challenge you. So we practice a lot, we train. And we think that with our training, we're going to get better. And we also know that with time, Arnold is also going to get a little bit weaker. So one day, we're actually going to be like, Arnold, you and me in that room right now, let's, let's go for it. And maybe, just maybe, we hold our ground, or maybe we even succeed. And that win, it's going to reinforce everything. It's going to make everything worth it. Our labor has finally paid off. And it's going to fuel our confidence to not only continue our striving in that domain of arm wrestling, but now we also have the confidence to explore other domains. And now imagine, instead of Arnold waiting for you in that room, it's a robotic arm waiting for you. A thousand watt assembly machine trained to do exactly that one motion without mercy. And when you wait, it gets updates. And with every update, it gets better. What are you going to do? Are you going to enter that room still? And I think it's this question that we're not devoting enough attention to. And I think we don't do it because the ramifications of it are so frighteningly massive for us. Instead, it's easier to obsess about the productivity gains that we're going to get together with some AI machine, and then collectively, we sleepwalk into one of the biggest paradigm shifts for humanity. So today, here at TEDx, let's try to wake each other from our collective slumber and Let's try to have a candid conversation how a new paradigm may look like. 
And I know, I can feel it. Some of you don't want to be woken from your slumber. You know, some of you will come to me and say, Niels, we've seen all that before, technological inventions, machines being better than humans. You know, just look at chess and go, these games. Machines are better than humans, and still humans compete against each other. And to those I want to respond, yeah, sure. But that's exactly the reason why machines are banned from these competitions. Now, can you imagine AI being banned from our work? I also cannot. And then there are others of you who want to continue sleeping because you have a fabulous dream, that dream of machines taking over your work and you can finally enjoy your hobbies and enjoy your leisurely life. To those, I want to outline the Marienthal study. It's a classic study. Um, Marienthal was a town in Austria where the central factory went bankrupt in 1929. As that happened, researchers came and documented what happened as people went into mass unemployment. And the effects were devastating. They categorized only 6% of the population as unbroken. The rest were categorized as resigned, despaired, or completely apathetic. The people there didn't use the mobility to set up shop elsewhere, and they also didn't do anything else now with the time that they had at their hands. Instead, time lost its meaning. So chores that were once quickly completed now took a whole day to be executed. And they also didn't use their time to pick up new activities, even though they were now offered in the form of writing classes and gym classes. Instead, they languished. Their life was stripped of meaning. Stripping our life of meaning wreaks havoc on our self-concept. And maybe now you start to understand why I, a psychologist, am getting worried, quite worried. But I don't want to leave you on that note. Um, partly because I want you to go out here with hope, but more importantly, because I want to have hope. I still have some years ahead of me to live, and I want to live with hope. So I started thinking a little bit, and I want to share my thoughts with you. If we think about it, we humans are socialized to produce answers. Mind you, socialized, not born. So all our institutions groom us in a way to produce answers, whether that's in school, where kids are taught to reproduce the right knowledge, the right answer, whether you're an apprentice, where you're supposed to know and then mimic the arts of your craft as it was handed down over the centuries, or whether it's at work, where we're paid to produce answers, whether that's in the form of PowerPoint presentations or Excel calculations or your creative work. And it's that type of work, those type of answers, that are now being threatened by AI. And let's just assume that there is no stopping, because our human nature and our love for convenience, but also other systemic forces, make it very unlikely for us to not completely hand over the steering wheel to AI. And why shouldn't we, if the answers by AI are better than the ones that we produce, or soon will be better than the ones that we produce. So where does that leave us when AI has all the answers? I think the solution might be in us asking more questions. What do I mean with that? I mean that we as humans should embrace our sense of wonder with the world, our curiosity, and in the process, start asking questions of any kind. Those that critically question everything, but also those that courageously explore. And in the process, discover perspectives that we had never thought of before, and force ourselves to view the world also in the way that we have never envisioned it before.
I believe if we start doing that, we can achieve great things. I think we can start the, with big questions, really big questions, because that is something that today most of us shy away from. And I think for good reason, because if you ask the question today, you're responsible for, ask, uh, for answering it, and that can be daunting. Ask some of the PhD students in the room, they know what I'm talking about. So in the future, we don't have to be afraid of asking the big questions, the important ones, because good answers are going to be available in abundance. It's going to be the good questions that are rare. And so you find me now standing on the stage, getting a little bit excited about that future, where we embrace our curiosity, our imagination again, where we actually use our institutions to hone the skill of asking questions. I think if we think about it from a civilization point of view, where we as a society reward asking great questions, I think just that paradigm shift can propel us forward much more so than any space shuttle to Mars ever can. So, despite my bleak introduction, I, today, here, try to provide you, and mind you, without the help of AI, with an answer to my question, what is the role of us humans in a world that we're going to co-inhabit with AI? But hey, maybe that's not even the right question or the best question to ask at this moment in history. Maybe between all of us, we have other really good questions to ask. I'm looking forward to yours. Thank you. <laughs>